So I'm currently at the Chilliwack Tulip Festival. I've already finished a painting and got that done quickly in the morning before the crowds and the heat came. And now I'm just wandering. The fields right beside me are hyacinths. It was very entertaining hearing people talk about, um, or just things they say when they're behind me. The oddest one was someone asked me if they could sit and pretend that they were painting. And then after I laughed at their joke, I, they said, no, seriously, can I sit and pretend I'm painting? And I said no to that. Can we do that though? <laughs> No, a little bit too far in that it's kind of my tools and it's not really there as a prop for people to take pictures with. And I could potentially just sit right here, but it is kind of hot. And you know what, maybe I'll just get some photos of this and that will be a in-studio painting if I really want to do it. grabbing my sketchbook to start sketching this view of the tulips. And what I immediately notice is I actually was almost too high up looking over the tulips and I wanted to have a lower vantage point. So I end up sketching it in my sketchbook and then laying it out onto the canvas but deciding that I want to move lower and I am standing in mud so I end up pulling out my uh, little camping chair so I can sit. But when you're in a field like this it's interesting how even a foot or two higher or lower will completely change what your painting looks like. Now in my last video I talked about wanting to bring raw canvas rather than stretched canvas in hopes to reduce the amount of stuff that I take with me. So I'm currently using the idea that I had in my previous video while hiking in Lynn Valley of using plastic corrugated sheets. And I have a triple layer of sheets there and one with a cutout in it and it's clamping together pieces of raw canvas. So I am painting on canvas, it is just unstretched. Now I'm sketching out the view again from this lower vantage point. Now from all the videos I've made so far, this was the warmest day and I was in, my palette was in direct sunlight. So that corner where I've laid out paint, it's dry by the end of my painting. I know a lot of you ask me what palette I use and it's a Stay Wet Masterson palette. So it's porous paper on a wet sponge. So it does keep my acrylic paints wet a little bit longer than normal, but they still do dry. So you have to take that into account in your process and where you end up sitting down. It did warm up throughout my painting process. In general, I like to lay out my paintings in red. So you'll see that I sketched it out in red and now I'm mixing my paints while that underpainting uh, dries. And a gust of wind was about to take my whole easel down so I was able to adjust it. And right now I'm mixing all of the co main colors that I need in the painting. And what I liked about doing this is I found having so many people there, I felt a lot of pressure to perform. Even though I was just there for myself, I wasn't part of the festival. And sitting there mixing paint, not in a hurry, allowed me to just breathe and get ready to paint and zone out and try to tune out all the people who were coming up to talk to me. Now I'm mixing the first color I'm going to use, which is the sky, which will be the lightest color. And then as I move forward, the colors will get darker. One thing about acrylics, especially when you're painting outside, is 
when they're wet, they're much lighter than when they dry. So I find looking at myself place these colors down, they look quite light, but they will darken as they dry. Placing in the greens. Now the spots where I've laid out the red rows of, or the red sketching of tulips, I found that I wasn't that happy with the placement the more that I looked at the scene. And so you'll watch that I save that for the end because I'm still trying to figure that part out. Now the tulips off in the distance were the brightest red, almost straight from the tube, and the tulips closer to me were more of a magenta red mix. So I was trying to mix something dark, and then that way I could put some lighter pink highlights on the end. However, the tulips closest to me, I could tell that the highlights were white, but I didn't want to go that bright throughout the entire tulips. Because off in the distance, you can see from this image, or this video that they look pink even though all of the tulips are framed in white. So it's using color as a tool, the color and the value, to gain perspective because I'm not going to paint every single tulip. And what's nice is I can keep adjusting and while I'm adjusting all of these colors and laying on top it actually adds more depth having multiple colors. So here I'm putting it, pulling in some darks and what the darks do is it actually makes things look closer and it might not be the right color, but at least it's a color I can then lay over top and make decisions going forward. And I just noticed I put a lighter color onto the, hey, I just noticed someone did a thumbs up in the video, that's funny. I was about to say, I layered some lighter colors onto the soil. The first soil color did look correct, but it dried darker, so then I had to go back and lighten it. So now I'm just putting more detail into that building and chatting with people. I did not like that first green color, so I brushed it out with my finger before it dried almost immediately. I have to say it was entertaining watching all the people pose in the flowers. While I got a chance to stare and look at the flowers for a long time, everyone else had their backs to the flowers while they were getting photos with the flowers. One of the advantages of being a painter is you really get to get to know the scenery and enjoy it. Now, I'm, as I was saying, I'm putting layers of color into the flowers and I'm trying to do bigger brush strokes in the foreground and more detail and less detail in the background so all kinds of tricks of perspective to make your eye think that there's depth in this 2d painting adding some more detail into the mountains keep watching all of the people posing rather than watching myself paint. It's kind of entertaining. But when you're painting, you get to tune all of that out. So now I'm taking pictures. So that's the final painting. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.
that. If you did and want to see more paintings, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you next painting. Thank you.